there are several special purpose domains within the CETAS data models. For example, um, there would be the supplemental qualifier or the relational records or uh, comments. I'll go ahead and talk about a few of these, including the uh, subqual and also the comments to give you an idea of how to create these special purpose domains from your original data. So to start out, you would, for example, in the subqual, um, you first select a data, a data set, for example, let's say the, the CM, and you wanted to find and identify variables that are considered supplemental. And this is just an example, but let's say, for example, that uh, this variable and um, this variable, these two are considered supplemental. And um, I would then also define what origin it came from. So by clicking on this, I would be able to define um, the if it's coming from a, der a derivation or perhaps it's assigned through some algorithm uh, or specifically coming from the source case report form. So, so far what I've done is I selected the uh, the variables and then I define them as either having the origin of case report form or derived and I would also select what domain it's related to in this case the conmed and then just some uh, study identifier um, a b c for example and then um, you also have to have some key fields such as an identification variable such as a it could be a sequence or period or date type variable so um, I'm going to choose a if I scroll down I can find um, some kind of treatment date along with a unique subject ID variable it has the smarts to understand which one and then ultimately what data set is going to create so in this example what I've done was I selected the domain, the related domain being CM, define the study, uh, select the identification variable, which is usually some kind of key fee, key variable, and then also uh, a unique identifier subject variable, along with the destination data set that I'm going to create, the subqual. Once I've done all those, I can go ahead and click on the OK button, and it would gather this information and generate the new um, subqual data set for me and populate all the values in the vertical structure. The structure is different than um, the horizontal structure that the original source data uh, con is contained. So in this case it can be long. It's going to go ahead and do a proc print gives me a, a, a view of what those um, data values would look like. Notice that it has the original uh, variable here as uh, and then it has some associated ID variables such as the uh, you know identifying date variable and then it all the values are then um, stored vertically here along with the associated um, label. So this is transposed vertically for you as you can see versus the original data which is more horizontal in structure. So this is a nice way of creating that data set without having to manually generate the code or program the code. You can actually view the code that's generated for you as well where uh, there's a, a data step code with some of the variables that is used to then, um, you know, generate that data set. So in a similar way, you can also create the, uh, what we just did was we created the, um, using the subqual, but you could also do a similar structure for the comments. In the comments, um, I won't repeat all the details, but the steps are similar in that you first select the variable, I mean the, the data set, identify the domain, type in some study ID, 
um, it will identify the variables for you that contains the comment fields and some additional ad identification type variables along with the final um, destination data set could be CO for example for comments so that's an example as to how you would generate this without you know manually having to program it yourself this will take the data and generate the destination special purpose domain and the associated code um, without you having to manually program and validate all that work